Silence Protect requires absolutely no signatures to detect malware. Because Silence uses AI to actually predict the malware, there is no need for Silence to have a huge signature repository containing known malware. As these repositories get bigger and bigger, companies begin removing older signatures in favor of new signatures. This helps keep the updates as small as possible. However, this creates a situation where older malware can actually come back and easily infect a computer. Not only can older malware reappear in your network, but also your end users are continually burdened with AV products that get heavier over time and consume more and more valuable endpoint resources. Silence's AI treats each unique sample as an unknown and it makes a mathematical determination in real time pre-execution. With Silence's approach, there are no continual updates and the product utilizes only a fraction of the resources compared to other solutions in the market today. In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at some older malware called Hacker's Door that has recently resurfaced and has been updated to run on more modern operating systems and platforms such as 64-bit. Additionally, we're going to demonstrate Silence's approach to preventing malware from running on the endpoint without requiring an internet connection. And finally, we're going to monitor the resources utilized by Silence during the detection process. To begin our demonstration, we're going to start a ping session to Google's DNS server. Next, we'll add the system manager so that we can monitor CPU utilization during the prevention of the malware. And lastly, we're going to ping an internal exchange server. Now we're going to take the system offline, not simply by disabling the network interface, but actually changing its default route so that it no longer can communicate to the internet. As you can see, we can still communicate with our internal exchange server. Lastly, before we grab our malware, we want to examine how much memory is currently being utilized by the Silent service. As you can see here, it's currently consuming less than 60 megabytes of memory. The second silence process is the UI that's running in the Windows taskbar below. And this only consumes a few megabytes of memory. Now, we grab our samples of Hacker's Door, both the dropper and the Trojan backdoor, and copy them to the desktop. Then, we simply attempt to execute them. As you can see, when the file is attempted to be executed, we get a Windows error saying that we don't have access to the file. This is because Silence has already determined in pre-execution that this file is malicious and it prevents this file from executing. Now we do the same thing with the second sample and again here, the file is quarantined before the system could complete the execution instruction. Throughout these steps, as we examine the task manager, we noticed that we didn't see any huge spikes in CPU utilization or even memory utilization. In fact, the Silence agent is actually released some memory and is now consuming less than it was even before. Yes, it is possible with Silence for you to deploy an endpoint security product that is not only extremely effective at preventing malware, but also do it at a fraction of the resources that your end users are having to deal with today.